This story begins right after the end of the Tournament of Power. Goku was in charge of making the wish to revive the universes that had been eliminated. All his friends recognized him as the savior of the tournament after defeating Jiren. The two Zenos were very excited that Goku was the winner. Several weeks after the tournament, Goku and Vegeta were training to achieve Ultra Instinct. Both were in Super Saiyan Blue. Vegeta questioned Goku. Damn it, Kakarotto, we should have trained with Wes. He's in better condition than us. We could have gained a lot from his training. Goku replied. No way, Vegeta. You and I can become much stronger without the need for Wes. Then he began to raise his guy. Vegeta said. Very well, then get ready, because I won't allow you to leave me behind with Ultra Instinct. I will achieve it too. Both Saiyans were training like they had never done before. Goku yelled. Kaken times 20. Vegeta thought. But what? I won't let you defeat me again, Kakarotto. He began to raise his power as much as he could. The place was shaking, a large number of rocks were lifted from the ground by the great power emanating from Vegeta. Goku asked. Are you ready, Vegeta? Vegeta replied. I'll always be ready, you bastard. Goku and Vegeta fist bumped, causing great tension in the place. Suddenly, Goku teleported behind Vegeta and planted a strong kick that sent him flying and crashing into some mountains at full speed. Vegeta shouted. You damn insect. How dare you hit me from behind. You'll pay for this. Then he shouted. Final flash. Goku put his hands in defense against Vegeta's attack. Seconds later, a bright light covered Goku's silhouette completely and shook everything around him. After a few minutes, Vegeta was perplexed trying to imagine if Goku had resisted the attack or not. When the dust settled, Goku was in a defensive position with his two arms in front of him. Vegeta said. It can't be. Is that Super Saiyan Black Silver? Goku had transformed into Super Saiyan Black Silver, and his power had increased so much that Vegeta's attack did not damage him at all. Goku asked. What's wrong, Vegeta? Why do you look so surprised? Vegeta had a throbbing vein on his forehead when he saw Goku's new transformation. Goku said. What's wrong, Vegeta? He still hadn't realized his new transformation. Vegeta replied. Haven't you noticed? You have a transformation that I still haven't achieved, you damn insect. Goku said. Oh, you're right, Vegeta. I hadn't noticed. Vegeta. You're really annoying, Kakarotto. You're always one step ahead of me. I can't stand you. Goku. Calm down, Vegeta. I'm sure you can reach it too. Hey, Vegeta, do you think there's someone up there that we can face? Goku asks as he looks up at the sky. Vegeta. I doubt it. I think the strongest beings are the destroyer gods, after the angels, and of course, Xenosama, Vegeta responds seriously. Goku, hey Vegeta. What do you think will happen to Freezer after everything he tried to do on the day of the Tournament of Power? At this point, we have a flashback, and we are taken to the end of the Tournament of Power. The Grand Priest had summoned the Great Yellow Dragon God, and was ready to grant Goku's wish. However, Freezer had a great idea at that moment, rushing towards the dragon at full speed. The Shinkan. Son Goku, are you sure you want to make that wish? Goku, yes Grand Priest. I wish for all the destroyed universes to be restored and everything to return to normal. All the warriors from Universe 7 were waiting for Goku's wish to be fulfilled and for all the universes to return. To Shinkan. Very well, then I will tell the great dragon god to fulfill your wish, the priest responds as he approaches the dragon. At that moment, the priest was surprised to see that Freezer was in front of the dragon. Everyone present was shocked to see Freezer's attitude at that moment. Beerus. What is that scoundrel Freezer doing? Whis. I think he wants to get ahead of us and make a wish to the dragon before the priest does. Vegeta. That damned Freezer, we let our guard down for a second, and he's already up to something. Freezer, thinking. I'll take this opportunity to be above the destroyer gods, even the Omni King himself. Freezer. Great dragon god, grant me the wish to become a supreme and immortal being, and also give me all the power that no one has ever had, Freezer would ask the dragon. The great dragon god would remain in the same place without responding to Freezer's wish. Freezer. What, didn't you hear me? I told you to grant my wish. What are you waiting for? Grant it now. Freezer would exclaim in a hurry. The dragon continued to ignore Freezer's requests. Whis, along with God Beerus, the two Xenos Samas, Goku, and Vegeta, would face Freezer. Beerus. He can only understand the language of the gods, that's why he won't grant your wish, because you haven't used the correct language. Goku. Why did you do it, Freezer? You were so close to being someone noble. Freezer. Shut up. 
who told you I wanted to be noble. My evil surpasses my being, and I can only live to dedicate myself to being the most evil being that can exist. Beerus. I had certain doubts about you, Freezer, but it's time to send you where you belong. God Beerus would send Freezer once again to the world of the dead. Here we end the flashback. Vegeta. That bastard Frieza deserves to be completely eliminated. The world of the dead is too peaceful for him. I think Beerus should have used his hack I and erased him from existence. Goku. Don't be resentful, Vegeta. He only tried to do what his mind told him to. I think he has remorse within him. Vegeta. Shut up, Kakarot. Don't you imagine what would have happened if that scum had gotten away with it? Where would we be now, you and me? That bastard deserved to be exterminated. Goku. Well, the thing is that he didn't act correctly, and there's no point in talking about it anymore. He'll have to spend many years in the world of the dead. Alright, Vegeta, I have to go now. I think the training for today was good enough. Vegeta. And what will you do, Kakarot? Goku. The priest came to my house yesterday and told me that the Xenos wanted to see me today, so I have to travel to their temple. I imagine it's a meeting, something like that the Grand Priest told me. He made it very clear that I shouldn't miss it. Vegeta. Alright, Kakarot, I understand. Goku. And what will you do, Vegeta? Vegeta. Unfortunately, Bulma told me that I had to help her take care of little bra. She only gave me a couple of hours to train. I'm already behind schedule. Goku. Alright, Vegeta. See you. Goku would put his two fingers on his forehead and teleport away. Vegeta would stand with his arms crossed, thinking to himself. Vegeta, thoughts. Someday I'll surpass you, Kakarot. Someday I'll surpass you. On another note, we are situated on the planet of the God of Destruction, Beerus. Goku had arrived on the planet of the God, and he wouldn't be alone on the planet. We could see the Cations of the Universes. Beerus. Finally, you arrived. Said the God Beerus, somewhat annoyed. Apparently, everyone was only waiting for Goku. Gosen Zasama. I hope you don't say anything stupid to the Xenos, young man. The Elder warns him. Goku. Oh, come on. I know how to behave with Senator Chan. Besides, he's very kind to me. Whis. Lord Goku always does the opposite of what he says, so don't expect this time to be an exception. Goku. Whis. Beerus. You better take our threats seriously this time, Goku. We won't allow any more nonsense with Xenosama. Goku. All right. And do you know why this meeting is so important? Also, what do I have to do with all this? Goku asked curiously. Whis. No one knows that, but what we do know is that we're already late, and the gods don't like to be kept waiting. Supreme Kaisama. Please hold on, everyone. The elder stretches his hands out, and everyone holds on, teleporting to Zeno's palace. Moments later, everyone would arrive at Zeno's palace, where we would find the god Champa, the god Bermuth, as well as Topo, Jiren, their respective angels, and all their Kations. Dishinkan. All right, the representatives of Universe 7 have arrived. It's time to start this meeting. The priest began to create a hologram with the universes. Topo. What are those things? Champa. Those are universes, and shut your mouth because otherwise you're putting us all in danger. Dishinkan. As you can see, this is the space next to the multiple existing universes. Topo. But if I'm not mistaken, there is evidence that there are 18 universes, and I understand that there are only 12 universes. Topo asks, surprised. Everyone present would start to murmur because they didn't understand why there were now 18 universes. Dishinkan. I'll explain. When Lord Son Goku asked to restore the universes that were eliminated, he didn't specify which eliminated universes he referred to in his wish. That's why the dragon decided to revive all the universes that once existed, and now we can observe the 18 universes in their entirety. Beerus. Son Goku, once again your recklessness brings consequences. Son Goku. I'm sorry, it wasn't my intention. Dishinkan. Please be quiet. I'm not finished yet. It turns out that of all these universes that were restored by Son Goku's wish, only Universe 13 returned with its ancient destruction god. There are five universes that don't have destruction gods. Beerus. But the lack of gods in those universes could create a catastrophic imbalance for the other universes. Dishinkan. That could be correct. After studying the options we have for this event, both Xenosama decided that the best decision was to leave the restored universes and nullify the option of eliminating them again. Champa. But then they'll leave that danger to the other universes. An imbalance could put everything that exists in danger. Dishinkan. I'm not finished yet. 
Zeno-sama called this meeting to recruit new destruction gods for the five universes that returned without their gods. Son Goku. Oh, it's good that they won't destroy them. It would be very sad if they destroyed the people who live in those universes. But since you told me that you won't destroy them and I'm not in trouble, I can leave now. Dashinkan. That can't be, Son Goku. At least not until I finish saying what I need to say, if you'll allow me. Beerus. Don't interrupt anymore. Let the Grand Priest finish what he has to say. Son Goku. I'm sorry. Dashinkan. In the Tournament of Power, Zeno-sama noticed the great potential that Son Goku has, as well as Lord Jiren and Topo. You three are the strongest mortals that exceed the powers required to be destruction gods. Jiren, you surpass the power of the gods, and Son Goku surpasses the power of Jiren. Jiren. That means that we three will be in charge of three universes as destruction gods. Dashinkan. That's right. By order of Zeno-sama, you three already have assigned the universes that you must take care of. The righteous warrior and leader of the pride troopers, Topo, will be in charge of universe 14. Dashinkan is the second in command of the pride troopers and warrior of universe 11. The universe you will have to look after is universe 15. Universes 14 and 15 are twin universes that are very close to each other, which is why you were chosen as gods of those universes. Jiren nods in agreement to what the Grand Priest said. The Grand Priest assigned Son Goku to be the god of destruction of Universe 18 because he is the strongest warrior among the existing universes. Universe 18 is a universe with many dimensions, which have many races, and where the dimensions are very chaotic. Your duty will be to create balance between all the dimensions of Universe 18. Goku says, just a moment, please. I don't accept this position. I don't want to be a god of destruction. I just want to fight with very strong warriors, but I don't want to be a god. I want to keep being a simple mortal who wants to become very strong, but that's it. I appreciate your offer, Grand Priest, but I'm fine as I am. Beerus, upon hearing Goku's negativity, runs towards him and hits him hard on his head, leaving him sitting on the ground. Beerus says, how dare you refuse the requests and orders of the Omni King, Zeno-sama, did you become crazy, are you asking for Zeno-sama to get upset and end Universe 7 because you refuse to comply with his decisions, of course, he accepts, Grand Priest, Goku accepts delightedly, says the god Beerus, Goku says, okay, okay, but you didn't have to hit me so hard, Beerus-sama, says Goku as he rubs his head after the hard hit. Dashinkan declares, very well, now that everything is settled, and it is more than clear what each of you will do, the gods of everything will be in charge of appointing you as the new gods of destruction. The gods of everything appear in front of everyone. The Xenos Sama declare, by the power we have over the multiple universes, we appoint Son Goku, Topo, and Jiren as the new gods of destruction of universes 14, 15, and 16. Goku thinks, oh no, I think I will be quite busy after all. Dashinkan announces, before leaving, the experienced gods of destruction must teach the new gods their respective techniques to destroy. Goku says, ah, oh, how nice. After all, I will have training and with the same gods. How nice. Jiren advises, son Goku, knowing how you usually act, I advise you to be careful when acting on impulse. Remember the weight of our decisions. Goku responds, heh, I will keep that in mind, Jiren. Topo says, this is something very important and serious, Son Goku. Stop asking for fights with the inhabitants of your new universe, or you will create problems for everyone, understood? Goku responds, don't worry, I promise to do my best. Dashinkan says, I hope you take your new responsibilities very seriously, gentlemen. You can leave now. The present ones nod their heads and one by one they disappear in a very bright light. Minutes later, Goku would arrive with his friends in Beerus's world. Goku says, wow, I never thought that the intention of this meeting was to make me a new god of destruction. Whis advises, Lord Goku, that's because you never think before you act, as suggested by gods Topo and Jiren, I kindly advise you to take their advice. You are an impulsive being, and being a god of destruction is very serious. Gosen Zasama says, you have a great responsibility, young man. I never thought you would have the privilege of becoming a god of destruction. You already have an explanation to give your wife. The truth is that I still don't know what I'm going to say to her. But I know I have to pay the consequences of my actions. As the great priest said, I am the one who made the wish without thinking correctly about how to make it. So I have no choice. It's good that you keep that in mind, Mr. Goku. Hey, if I'm supposed to be a god of destruction, shouldn't I have an assistant angel, Bo? How forgetful of me. 
I forgot to tell you that my sister said it would take a little while because she had to put certain things in order, but she said she would be with us as soon as she finished her work. What? Did you say sister? Will my assistant angel be a girl? Goku asks somewhat alarmed. Just as you heard it, Mr. Goku, your assistant angel will be a very daring angel, as well as somewhat arrogant, but still, she is a very tender angel. I'm sure she will be great company for you in this new stage as a god of destruction. Whis, didn't you tell Bulma to prepare a feast for us? That's right, Lord Beerus. Then what are we waiting for? Let's go. Located on planet Earth, at Bulma's house, we could see Vegeta taking care of his little daughter Bra. Vegeta was watching the sky very bored, thinking about what Goku might be doing at that moment. But suddenly God Beerus and his angel would arrive, accompanied by Goku. Lord Beerus, what a pleasant visit. Yes, yes, whatever you say. But tell me, does your wife have the feast we ordered ready? Yes, it's ready. Come in, you're at home. Hey Vegeta, I need you to tell all our friends to come. I need to give them some news. Can you do it? Who do you think I am? Insect, go and tell them yourself. But Vegeta, you better listen to Goku. After he says what he has to say, I don't think you'll continue with that attitude towards him. But what could he have meant? Vegeta thought as he went to inform everyone of Goku's request. Minutes later, we could see God Beerus and his angel enjoying the great feast that Bulma had prepared for them. Vegeta was somewhat nervous because he noticed Goku was acting very strange. Bulma simply watched, sitting in a chair, holding her little daughter. Kakaroto, can you tell us what you have to say that is so important yet? Not everyone has arrived yet. Vegeta, stay calm. I'll tell you later. Vegeta couldn't stand the suspense. Once all of Goku's friends arrived, he would start to say that due to the wish he made to the Yellow Dragon when the Tournament of Power ended, they had restored the six universes that Zeno Sama had destroyed in the past. But out of all those universes, only Universe 13 returned with its Destruction God. And because of this, he, along with Topo and Jian, were named Destruction Gods of several of those universes. What? Is what you are saying true? Goku, that's right. Everything I said is true. Vegeta would look at Goku with some envy because he had long desired to become a god of destruction. And having that title would leave him completely behind. That's great. Goku, that position is very important. I can't imagine the power you must have now. Krillin says, very excited and happy for his friend Goku's new title. Wow, Dad, I'm happy for you. In fact, I never would have imagined that you would become a god of destruction. Neither did I, Goan. In fact, I'm not very excited, but it's something I caused, and saying no to the gods of everything would be dangerous for this universe. And which universe will you be the god of destruction for? Piccolo asks curiously. They assigned me the universe with the strongest beings, and that is universe 18. But the most important thing I have to tell you is this, as god of destruction, I won't have free time to spend with you, so you won't see me for a long time. Upon hearing this, Goku's wife stands up from the table with great anger. But what did you say? Goku, you can't leave here. Do you want to leave me alone with Goten again? Chi Chi was very angry. I'm sorry, Chi Chi. If I didn't accept this role of destruction, the gods of everything might have been upset and erased Universe 7. So, out of obligation to protect all of you, I was forced to accept. Mrs. Chichi, Mr. Goku is absolutely right. You cannot deny the gods of everything anything. Simply doing so could put an entire universe at risk. What? It is said that millions of years ago, the six universes that were eliminated and are now back were exterminated because their gods didn't obey Zeno Sama's orders. And he erased them all. So, I don't think there's a clearer test than that, Beerus says, intending to calm Goku's wife. What you mean is that you won't be able to be in this universe anymore, father. That's right, Goan. That's why I ask you to become much stronger, to train every day of your life to protect the earth as I did. Goan, from now on, you will take my place. Okay, father. I promise to do my best. It's not that I can't believe I'll be left alone raising Gotten. I definitely shouldn't have married you, 
Goku, everything is a problem with you. I'm so sorry, Chi Chi. I really don't want any of this, but I have no choice. Goku would approach little Goten. You know, Goten, you have a big job now. You'll have to take care of your mother while your dad is away. Okay. Little Goten nods with some sadness in his eyes. All right, Goku, we have to go. We need to start training. I have to teach you the techniques of destruction. All right, Lord Beerus, I trust that you'll be safe while I'm away. Goku says, saying goodbye and disappearing from the place with Beerus and his angel. Crying, oh no, what am I going to do now? Go and don't worry, mother. I'll always be here supporting you until dad can come back. On the planet of the god Beerus, Goku would be training hard to learn the techniques of the god of destruction, as well as the Harkai. Several months of training would pass. All right, Goku, do you think you're ready to be a god of destruction? The truth is, I don't know. There are so many things. We'll see if you really are. Oracle Fish, where are you? Come here for a moment, please. Beerus calls the Oracle Fish. Here I am, Lord Beerus. Tell me how I can help you. Oracle Fish, what have you done today? The truth is, I'm doing what I always do. Which is eat, sleep, eat, sleep. That's what I did. All right, Oracle Fish. Go stand at that point without moving. Please. The fish nods and goes to stand in the middle of Beerus planet. Goku, you see the fish? Right. Well, let's see if you can really control the power of destruction. Throw Harkai energy at the Oracle Fish and make the energy pass by it without harming it. If you do, it means you already master it. But, Lord Beerus, what if I fail? If you fail, you'll give the fish nothing good and eliminate it forever. Also, you'll have to train again, so don't waste time. Do it now. Oh no, but this looks cruel. Lord Beerus, do you think I'm okay here? Of course, Oracle Fish, you're in the perfect place. Stay there without moving, please. Lord Beerus, that doesn't really speak well of you. The little fish isn't to blame for having such an undemanding job. Here I go. Goku throws destruction energy and does exactly what the god ordered. The energy surrounded the fish without damaging it at all. What was that? Oh my god. They almost exterminated me. Lord Beerus is so mean. The oracle fish leaves grumbling about the terrible action of the god Beerus towards him. Oracle fish, I almost died. I almost died. I almost died. You could hear the fish saying as he left the place. I did it. That means I'm ready, Lord Beerus. Beerus, it wasn't bad at all after all. The training isn't over yet. Mr. Goku, we need to know if you are capable of successfully destroying your first planet. But why? Come with me, Goku. Beerus heads towards a planet outside of his space. This planet is twice the size of planet Earth. Come on, destroy it with destruction energy. Goku would throw a big ball of destruction energy that collides with the planet, but the energy wouldn't eliminate the planet. It simply passes through it, leaving a big hole in the middle of the planet. It can't be. Use your mind to explode energy. Energy is like a part of you. It does what you want it to do. Watch. The god throws the same sphere that Goku had thrown minutes before, and this time it would form a huge explosion that covered them completely. Both gods, Goku and Beerus, traveled hundreds of places destroying planets to teach Goku the gift of destruction. Let's go back to my planet. You are more than ready to dedicate yourself to your new job, Son Goku. Goku and the god return to Beerus' planet, and they would eat wildly. I see you came back soon. I imagine you are more than ready, Lord Goku. That's right, Whis. I am ready to be a very wise destroyer god. Beerus one question, Whis. If Goku became a god, his life is supposed to be linked to that of a Kaioshin. Normally it should be like that. But since the universes are still reincorporating, it will be a matter of days or weeks before the Kaioshins of the new universes can be chosen. I already feel like I miss my family and friends. Don't worry about that. Remember that as a god of destruction, you also have centuries of vacation. After touring your universe and its dimensions, you can come back to rest. It's up to you whether you stay in your universe or come back here to visit your family. As for me, I will never complain if you come to my universe, as long as you don't put it in danger. Thank you, 
God bear us. I promise not to do anything wrong. You better not. Dummy. I notice you're a little tense. Lord Goku. Yes. Wiss. It's because the priest said that there were extremely strong beings in Universe 18. More than in the other universes. Is it true? I have never visited Universe 18. But it is true that I have heard that there are mortals so strong that they can fight with the destruction gods themselves. I even heard that there is a planet very similar to planet Earth. But the color is a darker blue. That is the largest universe of all and has many dimensions. So that's it. Alright, that fills me with a lot of curiosity. Goku would feel a great energy approaching. She has arrived. Hi. Hi. Dear sister, how have you been? Long time no see. Hi. Brother Wiss, what a joy to see you. And to you too, God bear us. The assistant angel greets. Hi. My name is Sun Goku. Goku would introduce himself with his typical smile. The girl, upon seeing Goku, blushes for some reason, revealing a cute expression on her face. Thought so. I didn't blush. But why did that happen? Hi. You must be Sun Goku. The mortal who surpassed the gods and became the god of Universe 18. Nice to meet you. My name is Yeni. That's right. I see they told you about me. It's a pleasure for me. Yeni. How nice to see you again. Sister Yeni. That's right. Little brother Wiss. It's been many years. I remember the last time I saw you was when the god of everything erased the six universes. But once again, I'm going to attend to a god said the angel with a smile. Well, I just advise you that when Goku has to destroy, you must pay close attention to him. Goku is an airhead. He may behave like a compassionate idiot who doesn't like to destroy. I advise you to be very strict with him. Yeo, how nice. Then I am in the presence of a very interesting god, since I have never seen a god who does not like to destroy. Thank you for the recommendation. God bear us. I will keep it in mind. Don't exaggerate, Beerus. Lord Goku, I also ask you to have patience with my adorable little sister. She is very susceptible as the twin sister of Margarita. She tends to have very sensitive days. So you at wins with the angel of the god Vermut. That's right, Lord Goku. Margarita is my twin sister, but we can't waste any more time. We have to leave. The road to travel is very long. I'm ready. Hey. Goku, yes, God Beerus, good luck on your new adventure as a god of destruction, thank you, take care of yourself, Goku and his angel disappear in a flash of light, travelling through space at 10 times the speed of light, Lord Beerus, you always wanted to fight Goku, why didn't you do it before he left, well, I'm afraid I didn't do it because the result of the battle would be more than obvious, this is a very long journey, Goku. Goku really. Well, I hope we have something to talk about so it's not so boring. And please don't call me Goku-sama. Just call me Goku. Alright, I understand. Goku. And tell me, Goku, could you tell me about your past? Goku would tell his angel, as they travelled, all his adventures, how he met the gods and how he was the first mortal to surpass the power of all of them. He even told her about the Tournament of Power and the wish that brought back the universes that had been erased. Now I understand why those universes returned. It was all because of your wish. And I also understand why there are two Xenos Soma instead of one. And tell me, what was it like in Universe 18? Asked Goku curiously. That's right. I know a lot about Universe 18. Although I must say that I don't know it all. But as an important fact, I know that you were raised on a planet called Earth and I know what its characteristics are. In Universe 18 there is a planet identical to that one called Earth. If you like, I can take you there as soon as we arrive in Universe 18. That would be great. Minutes after travelling at an interstellar speed, they both arrive in Universe 18. Goku and his angel have travelled to Universe 18, so let's get started. Kwai can't believe it. It's so big and has so many dimensions. I think I'm going to have a lot to do here. Welcome to Universe 18, Lord Goku. I'm glad you understand the importance of your role as a god. Kuyi Ani, please, I want to visit the planet that is very similar to Earth. I want to know how similar it is and also meet the beings that inhabit it. 
I want to know how strong they can be. Are you referring to the planet Nikita? I must tell you that this place is not as special as you imagine, at least not for the inhabitants of the other planets in this universe. Nikita is inhabited by beings who are rejected by other planets, and in reality, its inhabitants are not as powerful, well, not enough to challenge the god of destruction. I'm sorry to disappoint you. Even so, do you want to visit it? Kuai want to know how powerful they are. That's why I want to visit. Something tells me that something interesting awaits me there. Yani as you wish, my lord Goku. The angel disappears with Goku. On the other hand, on the planet of God Beerus, we could see that Goen, Piccolo, and Vegeta were there. Goen Lord Wiss, do you think my father has already arrived in Universe 18? Wiss I can imagine that if there were no problems during the trip, they must have already arrived in Universe 18. Vegeta we came here for a reason, Wiss. Wiss Lord Vegeta, I remind you that my training is directed to young Goen. That was the most important request that God's son Goku gave me, and I must obey. You can take some lessons, but only some. Ijita Tharza, damn Kakaroto, how I hate you. Beerus Tharts that Goku is quite a character. Interesting his son go into Wis to train him only to protect his family is something that speaks very well of him. That blockhead never ceases to amaze me. Minutes later, we could see how Goen trained with the Angel Wiss, while Vegeta trained with Piccolo. Returning once again to Universe 18 with Goku and his Angel Yiani. Yiani we have arrived, Lord Goku. What do you think? This is the planet Nikita, says the Angel while they were floating on the clouds. Goku was very surprised because he noticed that the houses on the planet Nikita were very different from the ones he knew. The buildings were built in a square shape. Goku wow, this place is very different from Earth where I come from. The buildings are strange. At that moment, Goku would see a girl walking down the street, and she had a tail as if she were a werewolf. Goku but what is that? Are there science here? That girl has tails. Goku asks Yiani very confused. Yiani my lord Goku, I'm sorry I didn't mention that detail. In this place, people are not 100% ordinary humans. We can find people with animal traits. That's normal in this place. According to the ancients, it is said that a great sorceress cursed them, but it's just a story. Goku would observe that the sky on the planet Nikita was very dark. The atmosphere was denser than that of Earth in Universe 7. Goku everything here is very different. I don't understand why they say this place is similar to Earth in Universe 7. Goku questioned himself. At that moment, Goku would sneeze. Yiani be careful, my lord Goku. If you don't hold your nostrils, you could annihilate this planet, and I don't think you want to do it without introducing yourself first. Goku what are you talking about? Yiani, I just feel like something gave me an allergy. I don't think I'll destroy this place just by sneezing. Yiani I inform you that since you were appointed as the god of destruction, you possess the divine power of the gods in your base state, so you are no longer a mere human and must be careful with your actions. Goku they didn't tell me that. Yiani in addition to what I already mentioned, you will not age. Your physical appearance will remain the same for millions of years. Goku would be very surprised by his angel's revelations. Yiani very well, my god Goku. What do you want to do with this planet? Do you want to destroy it because you don't like the appearance of its inhabitants? Goku no, Yiani, I find this place very attractive, although it's not what I expected. I think that's what draws me to this place not knowing what its inhabitants are like. Yiani, would you like to take a walk with me around this city? Yiani blushed upon hearing Goku's words, as she had never been invited for a walk before. Yiani thoughts he's a very different god from the ones I've assisted. His charisma and way of acting are very different, Yiani thought, blushing. They both disappeared and reappeared on a street corner in the city, without attracting the attention of the locals. Goku and his angel began to walk around the place. As they walked, Goku's stomach would make a monstrous noise, indicating that he was very hungry. Yiani Lord Goku, have you heard that? Goku yes, hey, that was my stomach. I'm very hungry, 
Goku said with a smile on his face. Yanni, I see. There's a restaurant nearby that serves delicious food. Goku and his angel walked towards the restaurant. As they walked, people began to look at them strangely because they looked like ordinary humans. Goku, why is everyone looking at us like that? Yanni, Yanni, as I mentioned, the inhabitants of this place are not 100% human. They all have animal features, and when they see that you don't have the same features, they think you're human. Goku, I see. But even so, they look at me with a lot of anger in their eyes. I would say they don't like me. Yanni, as I mentioned before, the inhabitants of this planet are despised by other beings from other planets. And one of the beings that have despised the Nikyadenos the most are the humans from other planets. That's why they hate you. Goku simply lowered his head and continued walking. But as they walked through the city, the locals' bad looks became heavier, and Yiani would observe as if she were thinking the worst. Yiani God Goku, if the locals attack you, will you destroy this planet? Goku listen to me carefully, Yiani. They hate humans because of the despise of others. So if they attack me, their hatred is well founded, and it wouldn't be a reason to eliminate them. Because I don't even know what the humans did to these Po people to make them hate them so much. Goku's wise words made the angel blush even more and give a mischievous laugh. Yiani, we're almost there. I'm taking you to the best restaurant in this place where they make the best ramen in the whole place. Goku, oh, that sounds great. I can't wait to get there. Both continued walking towards the restaurant. On the other hand, in what looked like a huge stadium with many lights as if a very elegant concert was taking place from a very famous star, we will be in the dressing room of that megastar. Ari, I'm so stressed that I don't know if I really want to go out tonight. Assistant girl madam, your exit is in 15 minutes. You must be ready by then. Ari, I know, I know, I'll be ready by then. But what do you think if you go get some food for me after my show? Her assistant nodded. Ari got up from the counter, adjusted her dress, and prepared to give her show. Assistant girl, you look great. I'm sure they'll love this show like all the others. Ari climbed some stairs, opened the curtains, and stepped onto the stage where hundreds of thousands of people could be seen, eagerly waiting for the megastar. The assistant left through the back door to go to a nearby restaurant and buy the food that Ari had ordered. Going back to Goku and his angel, they were eating at the restaurant. An old man couldn't take his eyes off Goku, Apparently the old man was the owner of the restaurant where they were eating. The old man was extremely impressed by Goku's incredible eating capacity. Yiani my god Goku, how can you eat like that? Where does all the food go? Yiani said as she saw Goku eating dish after dish. Goku are you kidding? Yiani, this food is a delicacy worthy of a god. It's really exquisite. Come on, Yiani, finish your dish. You don't seem to be as big an eater as your brother, the angel wis. If god Beerus knew about this food, he would come here every day to eat. Suddenly a bell rang in the restaurant, apparently a customer had arrived. Goku felt a great key coming from the person who had arrived at the restaurant. Goku that key is very strong. No human could emit a key of that level, Goku thought as he watched the restaurant's door. The door was opened by the old man, welcoming a beautiful girl. Goku thought she's the owner of that key. It's impressive. Yiani, seeing how Goku was looking at the girl, felt jealous. Yiani is something wrong, God Goku. I see you're very interested in that girl who just came in. Goku no, Yiani. It's just that that girl has a higher key than the humans on planet Earth in Universe 7. Yiani oh, I see. While the woman was placing her order with the old man, he was observing Goku, who caught his attention. Woman thinking who could that guy be? I can feel a great power within him, plus he's very handsome. Goku and the woman stared fixedly at each other without diverting their gaze, while Yiani felt a sensation she had never felt before. Old man here's your order, doll the old man handed the woman her order while placing his hand on her buttock. Woman no, old man, when will you lose the habit of groping my buttocks? It's time for you to stop your perverted behavior. You're already an old man, so you should know your place, the beautiful woman said to the old man while pinching his cheek. Old man there's no age for love, so I won't give up until you say yes, the old man said while laughing out loud. 
Goku observed the old man's act and also laughed. Goku that old man reminds me a lot of Master Roshi commented Goku to his angel. Woman old man, do you know who your new customer is? He looks very interesting. Old man he's son Goku, and the lady beside him is called Yiani. If you want, I can introduce you to them. Woman that would be great, Roshi said the woman to the old man, whose name was Roshi. The old man and the woman headed toward the table where Goku and his angel Yiani were eating. Old man Mr. Goku, I hope you are enjoying your meal. Goku yes, Mr. Roshi, the food is delicious said Goku with a smile. Woman I have no doubt about that. Old man Roshi has the best restaurant in this area said the beautiful woman to Goku. Old man oh, how rude of me. Mr. Goku, let me introduce you to the best friend of my adopted daughter, as well as my daughter's favorite assistant. Her name is Koniku. With her are son Goku and his assistant, Miss Yianai-sama. Mr. Goku is the god of destruction of this universe. Koniku, upon hearing the old man's revelation, was somewhat shocked. Immediately, Goku stood up from his seat and introduced himself cordially. Goku hello, how are you? My name is Son Goku, but my friends can call me just Goku. Goku introduced himself with his typical smile, which made Koniku blush. Koniku hi, as Roshi said, my name is Koniku. It's a pleasure for me to meet the god of destruction of this universe, although the idea of destruction makes me somewhat nervous, both shook hands. Goku you have nothing to worry about. I only destroy to protect the universe. Koniku so, you are our god of destruction. You must be a very powerful deity. Your body emits a great power, doesn't it? Goku and how can you feel the power of others? Asked Goku, surprised that she had that ability. Koniku well, that's a secret. Hey the woman said with a laugh. Goku I hope the beings of this place are just as interesting, as well as very powerful. Koniku Mr. Goku, if you like, you can accompany me. I can show you some places where there are said to be very powerful beings. Goku seriously, that would be great, but please remember that my friends can call me just Goku. The woman simply laughed while nodding. Yiani God Goku, remember that we're working. We have to visit other dimensions, and we can't waste time. Goku of course we will. But I think I would like to know how strong the beings in this place can be, as well as to learn more about the customs of this place and how its inhabitants interact. Yiani I insist, Mr. Goku, we shouldn't accept. We don't have time to waste, and you know we can't relate to the locals. Koniku come on, Yianai sama, don't worry, God Goku has already made the decision, so please accompany me. While walking, Kanjiku takes the hand of the god Goku, which causes Yiani to enter a trance of anger because she feels great jealousy, not imagining what awaits the god Goku. Ancient Roshi see you soon, Mr. Goku. We hope to have you back here, and you too, Miss Yiani, said the old Roshi as he said goodbye. As Goku, Yiani, and Koniku walked, Goku could see the immense beauty of the place until he saw a large stadium full of people. Goku hey Koniku, what is in that place? Why are there so many people? Koniku of course, Goku. That place is a stadium, the largest stadium in the city. The best shows in the city, the best performances take place there, and people come to have a good time. Goku how interesting, and do they have tournaments there? Goku asks excitedly. Koniku yes, indeed, God Goku. Sports events, theaters, music, among others take place there. It is a very complete place. Goku oh, that's great. I'm really enjoying this place. It would be great to have one of those fighting tournaments. Koniko would you like that? I know the person who can organize that tournament without a doubt. Goku I think it would be very exciting. Don't you think so, Yiani? Yiani that is right, God Goku. Only if you participate. Koniku it would be an honor for us if you could participate. Yiani of course, that way, you can demonstrate your power to the citizens of this planet. So it would be clear that you are the god of destruction, and that everyone should respect you absolutely, says Yiani, causing a look of annoyance in Koniku. Goku well, if there are really strong beings in this place, that would be the best place and time to find out. So I'll know what danger they can represent to the balance of the universe. 18 The three enter the huge stadium. 
Koniku introduces Goku to the gorilla guarding the door. Security guard good evening, Miss Koniku. You bring guests. Koniku that is right, they will be my guests tonight. Everyone enters the dressing rooms of the stadium. Goku, seeing the luxury and comfort of the whole place, is amazed. Ahi Koniku, I'm done with my show. I hope you brought me the food I asked for. I'm very hungry. And who are you guys? Where is my assistant? Says Ahi, missing the presence of Goku and his angel. Goku is also impressed, as Ari's beauty is perfect for him. Yiani, seeing Goku's reaction to Ari's appearance, would become twice as jealous. Ari where is my assistant Koniku? Ari asks, as she had never seen two humans so close before. Suddenly and unexpectedly, her assistant Koniku would arrive. Koniku my dear Ari, I apologize for not introducing you to my guests earlier. You will be surprised to know who they are. Goku, uh, I'm sorry. I should introduce myself. Hi, my name is Son Goku, but my friends can call me just Goku. Hey, Goku introduces himself with a smile on his face. Ari couldn't resist and blushed upon seeing Goku's smiling face. Ari thoughts he's too handsome. He's a human unlike any other. Yiani thoughts this can't be happening. God Goku raises passions in all the girls. He's a degenerate. Well, it's not really his fault. His way of being makes him very special. If this continues, he's going to have a lot of problems. No one had paid attention to Yiani until that moment. The god Goku had captured everyone's attention. Yiani, hi, hi. Since you didn't notice me, let me introduce myself. I'm Yiani and I'm the angelic assistant of the god Goku. Ario, I'm so sorry. It's a pleasure to meet you, Yiani. You must be very important people for my assistant to bring you here, right? Goku, hey, something like that. And I see that your adoptive father Roshi was right. You're a very interesting girl, Goku innocently says. Ari, so you met my adoptive father Roshi. I'm very glad. I just hope you didn't disrespect his assistant, Yiani. Yiani, no, he didn't. And if he had, I don't think we would be here cordially. Yiani comments, somewhat offended. Goku, your father was very kind and made us a delicious meal. At that moment, another girl entered the dressing room. This girl's name was Yusurua and she was stunningly beautiful like Ari and Koniku. Koniki Yusurua, there's your food. I hope you enjoy it before it gets gold. Yusuru excuse me, are they humans and what are they doing here? Yusuru asks curiously. Koniku let me explain to Ari and Yusuru in detail who Mr. Goku and his assistant really are. Koniku would tell them who Goku really was. Both girls would get nervous as they were afraid of the word destruction. Goku, hey Koniku, you're exaggerating. I told you many times that being the god of destruction doesn't make me a ruthless being. At least I'm not like that. I'm a god who cares about the balance of the universes and eradicates planets where evil is practiced. Also, I eliminate planets where their inhabitants pose a danger to other universes. And this place seems to be free of all that. Besides, it's an incredible place, Goku says to the delight of the girls. Ari excuse my manners, Mr. Goku. I didn't know you were such a respectable deity. Yusuru I also apologize. My presentation wasn't the best. It's a pleasure to have you on our humble planet, God of Destruction Goku. Yusuru also apologizes. Goku don't worry. Hey, now that I've just met you, I have reasons not to destroy this planet. I see that you are very kind people and I don't believe that there is any evil in this place. When God Goku said those words, the three girls blushed, demonstrating that their attraction to God Goku was beyond what they themselves could expect. Yusuru, thank you very much for your words, God Goku. In addition, I believe that Nikita is not the worst place on the contrary. It is here where beings who were rejected by normal humans reside the most. This has been our refuge, and we love this place. Goku, I was told that already, and I believe what you say is true. Since I arrived, I received looks of disdain toward me because I am a normal human and do not have animal features. I think that's how you felt, and it was very wrong of the humans. But remember, my friends can call me just Goku. I already consider you my friends. Okay, said the three girls in unison. Yiani my god Goku, it's already late. We need to find a place to stay. Remember that we have to work tomorrow, 
and there are many places to visit. Ahi but if it's still early, will you leave us so soon? We have already finished our commitments. We have much more time for you. Goku very well. I don't see any problem if we stay a little longer. Yiani, said Goku which would generate great annoyance in his angel. Goku Koniku mentioned to me that if I ask you, you could organize a tournament in this great place. Is that true? Asked Goku very excitedly. Ahio, Koniku said that. How interesting, isn't it, Yusurua? Yusurua, that's right, my Ahi. It's very interesting that Koniku said that. Goku, please don't take it against Koniku. She just looked for a way to help me. It's just that I need to know how strong the beings on this planet are, and what better place than a tournament with the strongest warriors of this place. But if that bothers you, there's no problem. All the girls would become pensive. Yiani, you don't have to ask nicely, God Goku. Simply threaten to destroy if they don't obey your request. Goku no, calm down, Yiani. There's no need. Ahi, I don't see any problem, God Goku. In fact, we're delighted that our God of Destruction wants to hold a tournament in our great stadium. Goku, I'm glad you considered it. In that case, I must now retire. I need to rest for tomorrow. Have a sweet night, girls. Goku and his angel disappear in a white glow, which would generate astonishment among the girls. Yusurua, my lady Ahi, I see you're very interested in God Goku. I saw how your gaze got lost in his. Did you just light up for God Goku? Koniku, shut up, Yusurua. You have no right to interfere in Ari's feelings. Ahi, don't worry, Kunjiku. Actually, Yusuru is right. I think from now on, life in this place will be more interesting. I never thought I'd come across such an intriguing deity. He's very handsome, kind, and too charismatic. Ari's revelation left her assistant Kunjiku and her her collaborator Yusuru perplexed. Somewhere in space, Goku and his assistant Yi and I Sama were located. Goku, what did you think of the three friendly girls we met today? Yiani, didn't you find them interesting? Yiani, thinking if only I knew how much I regret bringing him to this place. Goku Yiani, are you there? Goku asks because she did not respond. Yiani, uh, yes, my god Goku, I'm here. The truth is, yes, the girls are somewhat interesting, but very conceited. Goku don't exaggerate, Yiani. By the way, where will we sleep? I see we're wandering and can't find anything for the night. Yiani if you like, I can build a house for you on the planet Nikita. Goku you know I'm going to work all night. I'll rest tomorrow. I'm going to visit the planets around and see if I find anything out of place says Goku, and they continue flying through space. The next morning, Goku and his angel continued visiting neighboring planets to the planet Nikita in space. Goku Yiani, we must go to the planet Nikita. Yiani as you wish, my god Goku. Both travel at the speed of light to the planet Nikita. They arrived at a street on the planet Nikita, and the first thing Goku saw was a large billboard with an ad that said test your potential in one of the best tournaments held throughout Nikita. You can win the best worldwide title if you have what it takes. Only the best will attend. We're waiting for you, Goku. Wow, these girls are really quick to organize things, Goku says after finishing reading the billboard. Yiani, I'm afraid you don't want to disappear. Goku, but you're so annoying, Yiani. Koniku Goku-sama, how are you? Koniku says passing by and seeing the god Goku. Goku, hello, Koniku. How are you? And yes, of course it's me. Hey, Koniku, what did you think of the ad we posted about the tournament? Goku, honestly, it was a bit exaggerated. Koniku, no, not at all. Having the presence of the god of destruction makes it a unique event and therefore, the best must be demanded. Goku, do you think we can gather all the participants this week? Goku asked. Koniku, what? Don't you know? Goku, know what? Koniku, registrations are closed. There is no more space for more participants. Goku, what? But it's only 10 in the morning. Koniku, but registrations are already closed, and as the billboard says, only the best of the best registered. Goku, all right, then let's go. I want to see how everything is going. Yiani thinking it's the first time I've seen a god of destruction so kind. 
Is it because they are girls, or is he like that with everyone? Yiani wondered within herself. Koniku would take Goku by the hand and walk beside him as if they were lovers. Yiani thought this is the last straw. He dared to leave me behind to go with that whore. This is unacceptable, he's sidelining me for those newly met women. Yiani was very upset. Minutes later, they arrived at the Coliseum ticket booth to register. Ticket salesman I'm sorry, sir. Registrations are closed, so you may leave. Goku how dare you treat me this way. Goku's eyes would turn red like fire. Koniku wait a moment, sir Goku. I'll handle this in a moment. You don't have to get upset. The girl entered the ticket booth area and whispered to the worker. Koniku in a low voice you're fired. Koniku would give his registration ticket to the god Goku so that he could could participate in the long-awaited martial arts tournament. Yiani thoughts well, I can't deny that he has great talent for solving problems without generating others. I don't want to imagine what would have happened if the god Goku had continued to be attended by that rude guy. Yiani thought as she analyzed the situation. Goku alright, with this ticket, I am now a participant. I can't wait to see how strong the beings on this planet can be. Koniku Lord Goku, remember that you are a god, and they are mere warriors. I don't think they will be rivals for you. Will you eliminate them? Goku I can't answer that yet. I don't think I need to eliminate them. Koniku thoughts I don't know what would happen if the little Renekter touches Goku. Goku is there something wrong, Koniku. I notice you're deep in thought. Koniku it's nothing, my god Goku. Yiani, please come with me. We need to find some seats to watch the battles. Goku was waiting impatiently for his turn to fight. Announcer announcer tone it's time to introduce a new fighter. He's a friend of Misahi. Without further ado, I present to you the fighter son Goku Awu. All seats were excited to see that the warrior had the appearance of a simple human. Goku tharts wow, what a big and luxurious place. It's nothing like the battle stadiums of Universe 7. This is incredible, Goku thought as he stepped into the fighting arena. In this stadium, there were screens of all styles so that no spectator would miss the fights, and everyone could see the events. In one of the VIP seats, we could see the beautiful girls Ahi, Yiani, Yusurua, and Koniku, waiting for the great encounter. Yusurua tharts he's a very handsome god. Besides, he seems to have great hidden power within him. I don't want to imagine the great sword that accompanies him. Yusurua thought pervertedly as she observed the god Goku. Koniku miss Ahi can't stop looking at god Goku. Yusuru is melting for him, and I think even her own angel is in love with her god Goku. And I just hope I'm wrong and can keep him to myself. Koniku thought. Ah he thoughts he's really a spectacular being. His big body, his strength, and his dominance as a man are enough to drive any girl crazy. That god must be mine, ah he thought, since Goku seemed to be an enigma to her. Yiani thoughts I'm surrounded by these girls who have pheromones in abundance. They all want to devour the god Goku. Don't they realize that I can feel him too? Although, looking at the god Goku, it's impossible not to feel anything for him. He's so handsome. And, he's the only god I see who doesn't destroy anything just because he doesn't like it. That makes him a special god. Those were Yiani's thoughts. Announcer alright, ladies and gentlemen. After a long wait, we can announce the next battle. In the right corner, the deadliest warrior of all time the orcs, whose warriors are ruthless, accompanied by their huge axes and hammers, propose to crush their opponents. So, I present to you, the orcs from hell. At that moment, two giant orcs came out toward the right corner, showing their absolutely enormous weapons. Orcs wa ha 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 ha. Announcer not to be outdone, in the other corner, as we already mentioned, is the warrior Son Goku, a warrior who has just arrived on the planet Nikita, and is a very close friend of Misahi. Shouts for Son Goku Owu. The people didn't feel excited about Goku on the contrary, they seemed to be asking the orcs to finish him official. Goku tharts well, it's clear that not everyone likes me here. The announcer stood in front of the three fighters. Announcer gentlemen warriors, no low blows. You must respect the rules, or you will be disqualified. The announcer didn't manage to complete the sentence, as one of the orcs smacked him and sent him under the combat arena. 
Goku very well. This will be interesting. Two giants against me alone. Let's see what these bad-tempered guys have. The orcs rush towards Goku. Goku simply dodged each of their attacks, while laughing and provoking the anger and aggression of the orcs to an extremely high level. Goku come on, guys, what's happening? Are you already tired? Goku mocked his opponents. Yiani what is he supposed to be doing? Why doesn't he just put them to sleep? Kinjiku actually, he could only put them to sleep if he wanted to. Ah he he's the god Koniku, so the question is irrelevant. Goku noticed that the stands were silent, noting the speed of Goku and how he moved through the air, something they had never seen before. Goku simply gave each of them a small blow, and the two gigantic orcs fell to the ground, spewing a lot of liquid from their mouths. Goku goodness, I think I got carried away. I'm so sorry, guys Goku said to the orcs as they were taken out of the arena. After seeing how Goku defeated the two orcs without much effort, the announcer didn't know what to say. He was completely amazed. Goku hey, you announcer, is that all you have to offer? I didn't have enough fun. Announcer that was fast and brutal. The potential of Mr. Sun Goku is incredible. I think he ran with a lot of luck in this first encounter. It's possible that the orcs had kidney problems, and that's why they fainted in the middle of the fight the announcer said, trying to find an explanation for what had happened. Announcer for the next opponent, one of the best warriors of Tono Nikita enters the arena. A fighter who knows no mercy, a dangerous criminal whom few have survived. His cunning in battle is enviable. He's sanguinary, well known and hated by all says the announcer, causing the entire crowd to shout. People in the stands it can't be, that's Renekter. People in the stands he undoubtedly skin him alive. People in the stands those who survive Renekter are left crippled. People in the stands he should run away from there. Those were the comments of the people in the stands. What will happen in this new battle? How will the girls react to this incredible fight? Will Yiani have to help the god Goku? Find out all this and much more in the next chapter of this story. Remember to support the theory with your like and comment as well as subscribing to the channel. Here's the link to the previous chapter if you haven't seen it, and if you have, I'll also leave the link to the next chapter if it's available. Remember to read carefully which video each link belongs to. See you next time!